Natalie Worsfold teaches at Goodwin School, North London. Today she's preparing a cross-curricular PSHE geography lesson for her Year 6 class that involves group work and uses teaching resources supplied by Sport Relief, the biennial fundraising campaign for Comic Relief. The students will focus on the story of Solange, a 10-year-old girl who's unable to go to school as she lives in the slums of Recife in Brazil. And Tony Russell, a group work expert from the Institute of Education, will be observing the lesson and then discussing it with Natalie. How can group work be brought successfully into typical classroom activity? And just how effective is it to have children working together as a group? After 36 years in education as primary class teacher, deputy head, teacher trainer and consultant, Tony Russell worked on a research project set up by the Institute of Education called SPRING. The SPRING project looked into the social pedagogic research into group work because it was felt that the major pedagogical position of schools in Britain is the teacher-pupil relationship, as if all the learning and all the teaching is centred on that relationship between the teacher and the pupils. The social pedagogic view of learning is that it's a social process to learn and the other pupils in the class can teach as well as the teacher. But the research was to prove that rather than just have this intuitive idea. This research was aimed at getting the children both to sit together and to work together on collaborative tasks, not individual tasks. The researchers collaborated with the teachers and it was through what the teachers were telling the researchers that the activities were developed. Natalie has used group work in other schools and was keen to introduce the approach to Goodwin School too. I've used group work the whole way through. Group work encourages teamwork and cooperation which are all things that I think they need to go later on into the world. So I think it's helpful to start it at this age. I'm hoping to see how the children in each of the groups cooperate together, whether they stay on task, whether anybody is excluded, and also the role of the teacher. What is she actually doing when the groups are operating? Because that's an important feature of group work. To start off our lesson, what I'd like you to do is actually use your brains and in pairs, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to have a think about anything you know about the country, Brazil. OK? Don't forget, Alia and Olivia, you're working together. Peru is next to the Brazil. Is next to Brazil. The rainforest. Zach, what view will come up with? It's a hot country and there are rainfalls. OK, good. Vianna and Vikram? Um, many people have to beg for food and money. Good. Charlotte and Sophie? Um, it's near Peru and it's in South America. Put your hands up if you agree that it's in South America. Right, what we're going to do now is I'm going to give you a bit of time to actually research some more facts about Brazil, OK, and see if you can find out some more different things about Brazil. And to do that, I'm going to ask you to work in teams. OK, so, Lucy, you are going to be working on the computer, and since Kate helped you pick that colour, then perhaps Kate can work with you for today. Rishi, you're going to be using the information sheet, and I'm going to ask Jonathan and Emily to work with you on that today. OK, so you're going to be looking at the pictures. Yellow. Good. So you're going to be using atlases and a globe to research all about Brazil. So you can, first of all, ascertain that Brazil actually is in South America. Go. Olivia, can you take this to your group, please? There are your pictures, and you've got a book there as well. Here it is. Does anybody else on your table know what it's of? Is it like Brazilian dance? OK, good. Keep going, keep going with that. Today was very much a, um, a PSE stroke geography based lesson, so they were looking at identifying, first of all, facts about Brazil and where it was in the world, mm -hmm. but then focusing in on children like Solange, so identifying similarities between themselves and children around the world and the differences and recognising that actually they're quite privileged in a lot of ways. Yes.
in using this type of group work. Are there any drawbacks or difficulties? Sure, sometimes you can have a child that's perhaps a bit more domineering than the other children mm. and they t try to take over. Mm. But what I find is really good is that some of the other children don't let them do that. So if there is perhaps a slightly quieter child in the group, you mm. may have seen today mm. that one of the other children might have said, oh, actually, I think so-and-so should actually have their say now and perhaps let them talk as well. Yes. So it's good for making the children aware of other people's feelings and that other people have opinions too. Sometimes you might have a child that gets slightly distracted by being in group work, but as long as you keep the lesson pacey and make sure that they've given them set times for things, it normally keeps them on task. You need to make sure that all the tasks have um, are equally as exciting because if you're doing different tasks for different groups then sometimes the children can get a bit distracted because they, they're looking at the other group thinking I wish I was going to do that. So sometimes like a carousel where they actually rotate and they get a chance to do all of the different activities is quite a way to avoid that. For Tony, successful group work is all about the nature of these activities. The tasks that are well suited are those that require negotiation, sharing of ideas and opinions, not just information. That's not the fully blown, fully developed type of collaborative group work that Spring was trying to develop. It's more a case of debating, discussing, convincing the other members of the group that your point of view is worth listening to, the use of evidence, the habit of listening to one another so that you are actually engaging with what other people in the group are saying. You're not just ploughing on with your own ideas regardless. Sport Relief designed Solange's Mystery Challenge to encourage group discussion and debate. We created Solange's Mystery Challenge because we wanted to uh, make sure that students could work together as a team to discuss the issues surrounding Solange's life and come up with their own opinions around what the answers could be to the challenge to making sure that uh, there's no real right or wrong answer. This girl, her name is Solange and she says she's 10 years old, so the same age as most of you. She loves doing quite a few things that you like doing. She loves playing football. Who loves playing football in this class? So she loves playing football and she lives with her mum, her sisters and she's got five brothers. Now already that's quite a large family, isn't it? Now we're going to have a little bit of think about Solange today because Solange doesn't actually go to school. I want to think about the challenges that she faces that stop her from actually going to school, okay? And in a minute, in your groups, you're going to have a look at some clues. And these are all clues about Solange and her family. Now, some of them are relevant to your mystery, to your question that you need to solve, but some of them aren't, OK? So you need to work out which ones are actually useful to trying to solve this problem. Don't worry about what the table next to you is doing. Just focus on what you think, looking at your own evidence, your own clues. So this one, this one, Rihanna. Stop taking all the blue tack. I think we should put the argument to get everything else in a um, separate part of the notebook. These are all embarrassed. Yeah, but I don't think this will be embarrassed. Should she get the pitch? Can I write my name? Can I write my name? Do you make it? At the end of the task, each group reveal the reason they feel explains best why Solange does not go to school. She also might be embarrassed because her family actually lives in a rubbish dump and it smells and everything, <coughs> so she might be ashamed of it. There's lots of possible reasons why she might not be able to go to school. Which group thinks now that the, the biggest challenge she faces is actually Solange's family are too poor? Who's, who still thinks that one? The two dangers that exist in this kind of activity were both seen today. One group had the sheet with all the pictures attached, whilst another group was still passing the pictures around and discussing them. You do have particular children that often rush their work yes. and they, as you say, they get to the end before mm. they've really finished, before mm. they've really thought carefully about the task. Mm. And if they have another child on their table that would normally take their time a bit yes. more, it actually slows them down, yes. but at the same time speeds the other child up. Yes, yes. So the, the peer interaction is actually supporting all the types of children, the rushers and the, the plodders, as sure. you might call them. Yeah. Schools and teachers differ in their views about mixed ability and 
setting and streaming is very strong in some schools, but that is actually counter to the spring approach, which is that all pupils should learn to respect, listen to, collaborate and so on. If you're separating children out in that way as a routine, that undermines one of the benefits of the collaborative group work approach. I'd like to ask your opinion about three issues that people focus on when they're thinking about group work. First of all, group work and pupil behaviour. You can have a child in the group distracting the others in the group, but generally, if the children are interested in what they're doing, they'll yes. bring that child yeah. back into it. Potentially, group work can improve the behaviour of pupils, and one of the findings was that it was an approach that was suitable in classes of all types. Do you think that actually group work does engage everybody, or is there an issue there? Again, I think that would depend on you knowing the children mm. and the size of the groups. I did use a group of six there, but that would be quite rare for me, and certainly yes. I wouldn't use any more than, than, than eight, no. because then you will have some children not being involved in the task. Yes. But if you're using small group work, mm. that can mm. be very effective, mm. and it's very hard for a child not to be part of the group. Group work and pupil attainment. What's your opinion about that? I think as long as it, you input properly in the first place and gear them in the right direction, this whole idea of questioning at the moment I think is really key yes. and I do believe the children should learn to question themselves instead of just absorb knowledge. Mm. This one goes What would you describe your role when the groups are operating? I think you definitely need to monitor them. You can't just sit back and say, right, they're working in their groups now, they're going to come to the solution at the end and yes. everything's fine. Yes. You need to go around and make sure they're all on task. And you have to decide which one out of those four you think is the reason that she doesn't go to school. Oh, if there's more than one, I don't mind if you put down both of them and provide evidence for both of them. Teachers have to learn to stand back and let the children struggle with a whole variety of ideas and opinions and work their way through to a resolution. It is this light touch, more of a monitoring, standing, as the project says, the guide on the side. Do you ever get the pupils to reflect on their own skills at group work? I certainly do get the children to reflect on their own learning skills, mm. although thinking about how they work as groups is not something that comes up that often. That is something I can certainly do more of. Mm. At the end of the lesson, the video resource is played to show the class the reality of Solange's situation. Okay. Now, there was quite a lot in that video. OK, what I'd like you to do is have a think about what challenges you face. I'd then like you to think about the challenge that Solange has faced through her life so far. And think about how perhaps we could help her. And I'm going to give you just a couple of minutes there to have a discussion on your table about ways you think that you could support her and children like Solange, OK? Give them a certain amount of money a month so that they can actually yeah. live on, they can actually get proper food. So you can do that at the event, so then can go yeah. to a painting yeah. store or a, yeah. uh, maybe yeah. a panel.